with the consecration coming in two days, I want to be able to actually give us a little bit of enlightenment on what does it mean to be consecrated to Our Lady. I have done the consecration um, through St. Louis de Montfort, okay? Uh, he wrote a book called True Devotion to Mary, and then he has a 33-day preparation. And he wrote that, I think he's from back in the 18, no, 1600s, okay? And then his works got buried, okay, and got lost. And then they got refound, I think, in the 1800s. John Paul II has made this very popular. Um, and he was um, made aware of it through a layman when he was a young man during the World War II. And it changed his life. So I, I, my first time making that consecration, I followed the whole method of St. Louis de Montfort. The second time I made it, I used Father Gately's version. Um, and then another time I use some persons who I don't know, okay? So this consecration is something that's really beautiful and something that I've done, and it's wonderful to renew it, and I was really excited about Mary's mantle. But I do notice that when we're doing Mary's mantle, we are really plugging away at different virtues and ways to become more open to imitating her and our Lord. But it doesn't really explain what it means when we say that we're making a consecration to Our Lady. There are those videos done by the deacon and by Christine, um, which are helpful. But I just want to bring out some points that um, I think that we should all be aware of. So, and I'm, I'm following with Louis de Montfort, for he would be like the founder of really this devotion. Although, again, it's been practiced even long before Louis de Montfort um, made it um, so beautifully concise in his book. So, if, first of all, the true devotion should be interior. In other words, it's, it's a spirit and heart, okay? Like, the reason why we have this devotion is because we esteem her, okay? Um, it's not just something external, but it's something that we interiorly have been able to um, recognize, okay? And we see how much God loved her and how much God wants us to love her. His last gift on the cross before he died was behold your mother. And you know, and he chose his mother, and he allowed her to be a part of his life. And when people wanted to praise her just for her physical motherhood, he said, blessed is, are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Because she was more blessed in this. Many people say that she conceived of our Lord in her heart long before she conceived of him in her womb. So this esteem for Mary, okay, this interior devotion. And then to have a devotion that's tender. And Louis de Montfort says that's one that has confidence in her. Um, it is one where we are willing to um, go to her for recourse for any bodily and spiritual need. And I think about how often, you know, when something happens as we're growing up, and maybe it's awkward, you know, to share. You know, we, we pull our mom aside, and we're willing to share it with her and ask her, you know, maybe we need to go to the doctor, or maybe we need to talk to somebody, and we don't know how to do it, okay? Or we did something that's really stupid, and we just need to be able to... You know, and we have this confidence, okay, um, in, in, a, in a mother. And so this is the kind of confidence he wants us to go to. That kind of devotion is a tender devotion. Then he says it should be constant. Now, I want to say there are a number of you who um, were really hesitant, okay, about um, going on to this um, 46 days of consecration because there was a commitment of praying the rosary every day, okay, and, and then reading the book, although the book wasn't such a threat because it's like a two-minute read. Some of you have stuck through with listening to me as well, so God bless you, <laughs> okay? But um, this idea of constant, I think that after we do the 46 days, like tonight we met, I met a woman who was doing this consecration and she had not done the rosary and she was nervous. And she said she is now doing multiple rosaries a day. Um, you know, suddenly 
when she was able to do one, she realized it's not so hard. And it's now become something that she's actually able to multiply in her life. So when we have devotion, St. Louis de Montfort says, you know, you can start out small but have some way of doing something constant in your devotion. So whether that's the rosary, or whether it's certain little um, short prayers said to her, or something done in her honor, um, I would really, really encourage that continuation of the rosary because Mary has pleaded for us to pray it for the last hundred years as being God's weapon for us against the spiritual battles that are brewing and only getting graver um, each day um, throughout the world. And so um, I really do encourage that once you've now been able to do 46, keep going, <laughs> okay? And if, you know what, you get into a rut, get back up. Um, but it is something, again, that St. Maximilian, I mean, St. Louis de Montfort says is important. So, um, and he talks about the fact that when it's constant, we have to be able to be strong so that we can oppose the world, the world's fashions and their maxims. Okay, then he talks about this devotion being disinterested. And disinterested is a word that typically sounds pretty negative, okay, in, in, to our ears. But in the spiritual realm, okay, it does not, okay? So the word in, if you're doing spiritually, okay, disinterested means selflessly. It's not about me, myself, and I, okay? So the interest, okay, is not here. So that's where we had disinterested, okay? Um, so this does not mean to be cold, okay, in any way or form, okay? But it's not being self-seeking, okay? So, um... In, when, we, when we have this devotion, okay, and this um, consecration to Mary, we're not even, like, having this consecration for the fact that we want to get a good, even spiritual, from Mary, okay, let alone temporal, which is not, neither one are bad, but it can't be, it's not the motive for the consecration, okay? He wants it to, the motive to be that she is worthy of love, that being the motive. God loves her. She's beautiful. She's all pure. She's all loving. Okay? Um, and, and she's all about her children. Okay? I mean, I, again, every time she's appeared, you know, she's about warning us and, and then asking us not to offend her son. And that, you know, and then knowing that right now, God wishes to give extra graces for anyone who puts himself under her. Okay, this was this, the um, promise from Fatima. You know, he wants devotion to Mary. And Mary says it only in the light that her son desires it because in the book of Revelation, okay, he mentions her as being a part of the salvation for the world. Okay, in our prayer every, every evening, we talk about her being the source of our happiness because her, yes, he made it dependent, our, our whole redemption on her, yes, so that he indeed could be con conceived in her womb and, and then be able to come and be able to redeem us. So um, he wishes us, again, to have this disinterested um, devotion to her, one, because she just deserves to be loved and not for any reason of me getting something from her. Okay, then he wants all of our actions to be done by Mary, with Mary, in Mary, and for Mary. Okay, when he says by Mary, he means that we want to obey her in all things. Um, it's, it's a dose docility to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so by Mary is um, like when Mary, sometimes uh, some of the saints almost call her like the spouse of the Holy Spirit that she was so full of the Holy Spirit that she moved with him like, like a leaf moves in the wind, okay? You know, wherever he was directing her, that's where she would go. And so when we're doing something by Mary, it's by following the Holy Spirit, renouncing our own um, way of doing something. So, um, and he says, when you're renewing your 
like consecration to her, to do things by her, okay? Like, you know, it's sort of like a, a little child watching every movement of, of, of a mom or an instructor and, and doing it, okay? To be able to do it just right. Um, and then renewing it, he said, that could just be a glance. It could just be um, a little word that you say to remind yourself that you're gonna do everything by her. And um, so, again, it doesn't have to be anything profound. It doesn't have to be a long statement. You know, some people, they renew their, um, their commitment to Mary, sometimes just by a little wink whenever they go past a picture of her. You know, like, I'm all yours. I'm gonna do it by you. You follow the Holy Spirit, I'm going to let him dictate all of my actions too, okay? Um, you've given me the example. Okay, then doing it with Mary, to look to Mary as our model and to imitate her, okay? Um, to especially looking at her lively faith and, and imitating that faith. You know, she didn't have to understand. Or hu her humility, the way she hid herself the way she held her peace, the way she submitted to everything. This is how we do it with her. We follow that role model, okay? Um, and then that purity that she had, not allowing for immodesty. And I think this is so, so important. Mary brings this up many times to those who are favored with the cushions of her, how important purity is. Even to little Jacinta, who didn't even know what she was saying, but Mary said to her, most people offend, like fall away from God, from sins of the flesh. And, and, and she didn't know what that meant, okay? But she repeated it, okay? And, um, and that would be, sins of the flesh are typically anything that's going, especially against sexuality. And so this purity, okay, Mary told Jacinta, there's going to be fashions that we're going to be introduced that will be very offensive to God. And so let us look at the way in which we dress. Um, you know, is it modest, not overly showy? This is something that we're asked to do when we consecrate ourselves. And then um, our language, you know, is it crude? Like, would Mary say it? If Mary wouldn't say it, then why should we say it? Because we allow Jesus to be laid on our tongue, or we receive our Lord and we lay him on our tongue. But are we also going to put crude words on those same lips, or unseemly speech, or unseemly jokes, um, or unseemly stories? You know, some stories don't deem being repeated, even if they're true. So this purity of Mary, this is how we do things with Mary in our consecration. In Mary, it says Jesus was conceived in her heart before she was conceived, before he was conceived in her flesh. And we look at the Immaculate Conception. You know, we celebrated that yesterday. And, um, you know, she was conceived without sin because she was to hold the new Adam who would take away all sins. And so she had to have this, this beautiful um, cleanliness, okay? And, and so we want to imitate her in this, trying really to um, make a good examination of conscience. And, and then when we're going to do something, when we're doing it in Mary, that willingness to be quiet and to seek her counsel. If we're going to do it because we know that she'll direct us in a way that pleases her son. So it's, it's this... Um, uh, just seeking her peace um, to guide us in, 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 in following this consecration. And the last one is, tends to be difficult. And this one is for Mary. And the reason why it's difficult is we know, like, well, she's not the end. God is. And St. Louis the Mumford says, you're absolutely right. But when he says for Mary, it's in the sense that um, the only way I can liken it is that it God gave us her, okay? And so she gives everything to him. Mary has never kept anything for herself. As soon as Elizabeth prays her, she's like, my soul magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me. 
Again, and then, you know, the low that he's lifted up, the rich he has sent away, you know, and he, she goes through glorifying God. This is Mary, okay? So when we do something for her, okay, it's in the sense of presenting it to her to present to her son. That can sometimes be a little bit hard because we like having our ownership and, um, and, and totally understanding it can be a little bit hard. So I think about my dad, okay, um, and his love for my mom. And I remember coming home one time and he was letting me know how many times my mom would go to the mailbox and was just looking for like a letter from her daughter and, and didn't receive one. And, you know, and it really, I felt so ashamed of myself. I'm terrible at writing letters, and I still am terrible at writing letters. But it was so beautiful to know how much that affected him, that it made him so happy to see her face light up when she got a card from her children. And I think about that with God. You know, when we see her beauty and her goodness, and we're willing to present her, with things that we want to be able to give to God, it, it only thrills the heart of God even more. And uh, Mary is never keeping it for herself. It is all for the glory of God. Louis de Montfort goes as far as to say to give Mary even the merits that we earn. Okay, so that if I'm praying um, for a lot of the special intentions, I can have them all brought to the attention of Our Lady, and then offer my prayer and my sacrifices and let her dispense of all the merits to whomever she wishes, okay? Letting go. The way that Mary did when she presented the need of the couple at the wedding feast, they have no wine. And then she just says to the waiters, do whatever he tells you, and she lets go. Okay, and now, Louis de Mumford is asking us to do that and to give it to Mary and allow her to um, administer it, okay, accordingly because she's always looking at the heart of God. And Mary can never be outdone in generosity. And we know that any of those needs that we've placed before her, she will pray for them even more intensely than we do. However, this does not mean that we can't pray for a person. Saint Cousset, um, I don't really know how to say his name, but he was a spiritual director for Saint Margaret Mary. He made a consecration to the Sacred Heart. And he said, um, even within his consecration, he writes that there are times when he's going to offer a prayer for an individual or have a mass said for an individual. Okay, um, but the merits of the act of charity is what he hands over. Okay. And so we can say, hey, so-and-so, I offered a rosary for you today. But we just give Mary the merit of doing an act of charity then. Okay? So you can still direct your prayers, okay, to persons. But when you um, are able to just hand over all your intention to her and then make your sacrifices and prayers and then let her go ahead and administer to them as she sees because she's looking at the heart of Jesus and knows where those needs are most um, in the world at that time. And um, so this consecration, okay, it's not um, something small, but it's something beautiful. And it's, again, to be especially practiced by imitating her. And that's why this one, consecration, um, has been something I really love because I've always asked God to increase my love for his mother by the imitation of her virtues. So may we be joined in that this Saturday, which I'm going to do here at 7 o'clock with a song, with the consecration, uh, prayer, and then with a rosary.